Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and you're in for a special treat because I'm going to review a classic 1987 sci-fi action adventure film that I really enjoy watching ever since I was a kid. It's called Predator. That's right, Predator. The film about an alien creature that wants up in the Central American jungle, which Arnold Schwarzenegger who plays Dutch in the film, along with a team of soldiers who goes out in the same jungle to rescue some hostages and stopping all these bad guys until suddenly, you know, one of one of his other soldiers wants up being killed and skinned alive by the alien creature itself named Predator. And that was the film that became a box office hit. Um, when it came out in the summer of 1987. In fact, this movie came out before the film uh, Full Metal Jacket, which already was doing another you know, Vietnam War film, already with Platoon and all the other films that followed. But this one was a lot different than any other film I've seen, because this is a film that's focused inside the jungle, which they knew something mysterious was about to happen. And they thought that you know they weren't alone that someone that some creature that's from out of space will go around killing every single soldier and it's up to Schwarzenegger to stop him yeah now I've been a huge Schwarzenegger fan ever since I was a kid and prior to this film because I actually saw this movie on TV when it aired on Fox back in 1989 Although I think I've seen it on HBO before that. And I remember because I had the VHS recording of it, and I still do, which is actually a copy from my father's tape because he taped this movie. And yeah, and I remember watching this countless of times, only to figure it out that some of the scenes that I saw in this version was missing from, that's sad to say. <laughs> I was amazed that I missed some of the scenes that were in that f recording and when I finally saw this on every edition especially on HBO Cinemax and all these other channels and of course this blu-ray that I got I was amazed that there were so many scenes that were missing in the film and yeah there were a lot of graphic scenes that they put in you know mostly shots of, of people uh, getting skinned alive having their arms getting sliced up all right and or even getting your head blown off and <laughs> the stabbing of the pig or any other I mean this movie had a lot of graphic violence into it and that's what made it up for it definitely for a sci-fi action adventure you basically get a lot of that and and it also works because this was of course an awesome Schwarzenegger film I've seen you know prior to his other successful hits with with the Terminator, Commando, and and his underrated film that I enjoy, which wasn't a hit, sad to say, but I wish it was, Raw Deal. And that's became another favorite of mine. And as well as Conan the Barbarian with its sequel. Yeah, not as good as the first movie, but I can live with it. Also his earlier work after he was doing a lot of bodybuilding and, and so on and so forth, you know, he did do the documentary Pupping Iron. He did, of course, movies like Stay Hungry uh, with Jeff Bridges and Sally Field, you know, The Villain with Kurt Douglas. He even did Hercules in New York, which basically they dubbed his voice in that film in a very silly way. If you ever saw Hercules in New York, watch out. Because this had to be the most... Hilariously stupid films I've ever saw. <laughs> yeah. But I guess <laughs> you, you get the idea. But come, but nevertheless, uh, I really enjoy this movie a lot. And I always have and always will. This was the Blu-ray that I got in 2008. This was actually one of the earlier Blu-rays that I ever bought. Ever since I bought that Blu-ray player back then. Yeah, because I bought Sleeping Beauty and... Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull you know, and all these other ones. Yeah, and I, I remember buying this. 
only to find out that even though they had the original cover art that was from the 2004 collector's edition, but sad to say I, I didn't buy, I should have bought it a long time ago, I made a mistake back then, but, well, <laughs> what else, what can you do? I had, plus, I had a hard time looking for it, too. I knew I made a mistake then. But, so this one here didn't have any features whatsoever except the trailer. But the transfer on this one was basically the original transfer that came from previous releases. But this one was done for high-definition feel. It has all the grain structure intact the way it was meant to be. And plus, it was a BD25 uh, gigabyte... Uh, Blu-ray, which has an AVC codec, which actually would be MPEG-2, yeah, 19. So yeah, and if you look at the back, that's pretty much how the features they have, and it comes in a in a much better case than those stupid Eagle Box ones that we get. You can even see the cover art of Arnold and all the rest, and all this stuff is just uh, <laughs> just your typical stuff that Fox has been selling. Now, uh, prior to this release that I got, which, um, and I'm always going to keep this one, no doubt about it, because this is the only uh, Blu-ray release that has, I, I know there's also a double feature with Predator 2, yeah, someday I will review that if I ever buy that film, because I love the second one too, a uh, very underrated sequel, I don't, I don't understand the hate on that one, but prior to this one though that I got, well, what luck I had to change for this one, but it was only for $7.99 since I bought this one for $20 bucks a long time ago when it came out. I bought the dreaded Ultimate Hunter's Edition of Predator. Yeah, the one from 2010 that was re-released because some people were complaining about that release because of the, the grain structure, yeah, thinking that the transfer was all grainy. I had no problem with that because that's exactly how the film was intended it to be. There was nothing wrong with grain. Okay? I don't know why people make a fuss about that. It's like if people never saw movies like this. You're always going to have grain no matter what. I mean, as long as they improve better, then you'll understand. But I didn't think it wasn't that bad, so I had to defend that release. However, the transfer on this one, because a lot of people complain about it I know a lot of people had since you know they thought maybe this will maybe improve better for the 2008 release that they had they got a lousy DNR riddled transfer that they ever had yeah everything was all filtered in with digital noise reduction yeah that's what DNR stands for where all the characters are basically wax figures yeah everything from Arnold Schwarzenegger to <laughs> to the rest of the soldiers, the jungle, and the creature. Everybody just looked like wax figures all the way around. Yeah. So basically, what they did was they just they took a film print from its original source. They did sort of give it. I think they someone said that they gave it a 4K release for it, as it's supposed to be, and they actually remastered it by using a computer just to remove the whole layer of grain so they they clean everything out of there and they and it sort of lose a lot of detail that went into the, the project so yeah that's why you know all the characters look all waxy and that's how bad it looks despite the fact that the movie itself doesn't look too bad you know but it sort of loses a lot of detail even, even the problem with it though was that it's most of these scenes were overly bright, as it turned out, and it kind of lose some senses. And I agree, it's it's kind of annoying. It didn't bother me much, but it sort of bothered me from some level of premises. So I can't defend this transfer because that's my problem with it. It's just it's a pretty lousy transfer, and to make matters worse, you know they're still recycling the same transfer for its. 3D edition that they got released and oh god I mean what were they thinking I was having some high hopes for that edition just for a much better transfer yeah getting getting back to its uh, old roots and fix everything that they they failed the first time 
because they made tons of big mistakes for this release. Well, they were lazy, so <laughs> they just give us a 3D version of the same edition that's already been here. So I, I said to myself, why bother? It was a waste of time. But this was the edition and the only edition before the 3D version came along that has all the extras that came from from the previous DVD editions. Yeah, including the 2004 collector's edition that has those extras. And I tell you this, watching the extras on the Blu-ray is a whole lot better than than the transfer itself. That's for sure. And that was the main reason why I got this is for the extras alone. So now I don't have to worry about that. But I already know the transfer sucks. I can live with it, okay? I can live with a bad transfer to no transfer at all. That's that's for sure. But don't worry, because when Fox finally bite the dust on making another Blu-ray release with a much better transfer that's remastered properly, then yes, I'm definitely going to buy another Blu-ray. Third time will be the charm for me. And who knows what I'll do with this one. But otherwise, I think I'll just keep it. Just like I kept the 2008 release. And I'm always well going to keep it anyway. So I don't care. But that's how bad uh, this release was. I mean, despite of the awesome extras that, that came from the original DVD releases. At least we get to see that. And the two extras that they have from this release... Yeah, you know, we're taking mostly for the, uh, basically a cash grab for the 2010 film Predators. Yeah, because you got Robert Rodriguez and and the director, you know, talking about you know their on um, the classic movie, and they you know they're talking about all the good stuff that went into it, and also has a sneak peek. So that's all they have in this set. But I'll tell you this though. For those who um, who owned the 2004 Collector's Edition and bought this one prior to this, keep it. Definitely, you know, don't bother buying this edition if you love the movie, you know, and you're already happy for what you have. You know. For those who bought this set and you didn't buy the Collector's Edition and you just bought this one, then, like I did, then I guess, you know... Take it for what it's worth. Um, but for those who bought this movie as a result of this, and you already own all the previous editions, and you want to keep it that way, then don't waste your time with this. It's a piece of shit. But you know what? I I'm going to keep this, as well as this, and I'm going to live with it. So. <sighs> Let's get it over with. <laughs> That's all that matters. So let's get to the review because, yeah, the video is getting longer already now since I've been talking about it. So here it goes. The movie stars Arnold Schwarzenegger with Carl Welders for the movie Rocky along with some of the sequels that he's been in. Yeah, he's very good. Bill Duke, who previously was in a film with Arnold Schwarzenegger called Commando, played the bad guy in that film. Jesse the Body Ventura, you know, always been known as an awesome wrestler from the WWF wrestling years. He later went on to become a governor. Yeah. Sonny Lanham, you know, who's, who's very good in this movie. He went on to do um, a film with Sylvester Stallone in a prison action adventure thriller called Lock Up. Richard Chavez. Shane Black, you know, who later was, of course, the writer of, of Lethal Weapon and, uh, and the Monster Squad. Yeah, both came out the same year. Yeah. R.G. Armstrong. Alipida Corello. And Kevin Peter Hall, who plays uh, the Predator. Yeah. As well as the helicopter pilot who just made a cameo appearance. Yeah, God rest his soul because he's such a great actor and a great role to play a lot of creatures, you know, including uh, the Bigfoot character and Harry and the Hendersons. They also got Peter Cullen to do the voice of the Predator, which is really cool. And Swin Old Forson. 
It's written by the Thomas Brothers, Jim and John. And it's directed by John McTiernan, who later went on to direct another blockbuster smash hit, Die Hard, with Bruce Willis. And then later, The Hunt for Red October, which is the first movie of the Tom Clancy novel, focusing on Jack Ryan, with Sean Connery and Alec Baldwin. And then later, Last Action Hero with Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Thomas Crown Affairs remake with Pierce Brosnan and Rene Russo, and of course, that shitty remake, which I really didn't care for, Rollerball. Yeah, such a shame. The movie begins when an alien spacecraft had came from outer space and landed into Earth, all the way straight to the Central American jungles. Major Alan Dutch Chauffeur, who's played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, who arrives at the same area along with his elite team, Mac Elliott, Blaine Cooper, Billy Soul, George Poncho Ramirez, and Rick Hawkins, along with Dutch's old military friend George Dillon, who's played by Carl Rudders, who is now working for the CIA to accompany them as a liaison by, by saving a Prudential Cabinet Minister along with the hostages that's already being captured by Central American uh, bad guys. So what they did was once they get inside they have spotted a downed helicopter and later remains the US Army Special Forces soldiers being skinned to flesh. So already for their presence of their country also along with their bodies have puzzled Dutch and the rest of the crew. They were basically horrified to find the bodies you know, that's already been hung and have their skin removed as they tracked down the gorillas to have any defender rebel campaign where they destroy except for the woman named Anna you know, whom they were taking prisoner against. So Dutch was a rage when Dylan had confesses that the rescue mission that they were hoping for was just a ploy to get the group to attack the rebel camp. And once they found out about it, they have disappeared in the failed rescue of two CIA agents. So they try to make their way for exchange point. But unfortunately, once Anna briefly escapes, you know, they soon discovered that an alien creature, also known as, as a predator, you know, winds up being camouflaged by being invisible, as you, you don't basically see him, except you started seeing a lot of you know, clear images throughout the jungle as he swings around, and winds up killing one of the soldiers that falls beneath its path. The first soldier that, that the predator killed first was Hawkins, who's played by Shane Black, who's already being uh, stabbed and dragged off as he basically unarms Anna, you know, already being filled with his blood. So the team was already looking for her since Hawkins tried to catch her from escaping. You know, the Predator wants up killing Blaine, you know, and Mac already saw the creature and opens fire at it, you know, shooting a lot of rounds that, that, uh, Blaine's gun actually had, yeah, very powerful, and and all his other stuff that are following. Then they're, t then it winds up disappearing into thin air, already with you know his green glowing blood as he's already been hit. Yeah, went inside the leaves, and Anna had touched it just to, just to find out about the blood that they, she just saw, and it actually glows too once she put it on her, her jeans. Anyway. Anna was trying to explain to the group that the creature observing them is a local legend that is some kind of an alien who's been hunting for years and probably has killed more than, than many of the U.S. Special Forces soldiers all around. So as a result of this, the team had set up a trap for the creature but avoids it and suddenly it's severely wounded Poncho in the process while Mac and Dylan was, you know, or, or trying to go after it as they spotted until suddenly they both got killed. Yeah. Yeah, also, Billy was slain to make a stand once they tried to escape. You know, trying to get to the chopper, <laughs> as Dutch said. 
Get to the chopper! Now! Yeah. Well, once they made a run for it, you know, the Predator decides to catch up Dutch and engage on a short shootout, which already killed Poncho. And and once up and Ayana winds up going straight to the chopper, you know, already to get rescued. You know. The Predator winds up chasing Dutch all the way through the jungle and then and Dutch winds up falling into the, the waterfall. <laughs> yeah, trying to you know, already <laughs> making a run for it and then and suddenly he landed right straight to the mud and once he got into it and then and the Predator wants up joining against him so already covered in mud you know predator didn't see him which is also amazing about this creature predator because he can actually uh, see through his uh, visions that he has between his eyes all that uh, colorful camouflage vision that you never thought you would see you know, everything's all color red you know, blue green that sort of color with white into the mix. Yeah, it's it's like the kind of camouflage vision that you never thought you would see. It, it's really something. He also records uh, sound from the soldiers, you know, always mixing up all the stuff that he put in. And, and he gets to see all the, the the looks of the jungle. Yeah, he even captures a... A dead uh, scorpion, which Mac actually killed already, um, when he already found out that it was on um, on Dylan's shoulder, yeah. it, which he thought that he was going to stab him. <laughs> Never did. Anyway, yeah, he. It was a beautiful shot where he actually shows uh, the scorpion, the dead scorpion on his hand. You can see how creepy that scene was. Uh, anyway, he was. He was going after Dutch. You know, Dutch couldn't spot him because he was already covered in mud. And as a result of this, Dutch decided to set a trap for him. This time, you know, he's going to really get it. And he already covered in mud. You know, he's already, you know, you know lighting up you know, the flame torch. And he just screams <laughs> just to set it up for so that way the predator can finally come into the trap. And while almost getting caught by it, the predator winds up spotting him and already shooting and blasting between every scene since he's already since Dutch already had used the arrow to shoot him. And then yeah, he winds up going after him, you know, hiding against the the creature and then he <laughs> fell off. And then suddenly he finally spotted him and then he even says that line once the predator took off his mask and everything, saying you are one ugly motherfucker. <laughs> That's what it was. So then, yeah, they were battling each other until he, f until the predator finally went into the trap, and going to, <laughs> almost trying to catch and kill Dutch, and then suddenly he <laughs> he fell right into it, and then it actually recorded that line that he that he just said, "Who the hell are you?" And then he was already, you know, opening up his, his case and already setting up a bomb to himself because he was going to explode himself. And has that creepy laugh that came from Billy, which he killed, of course, skinned him and all the rest. And, and it was a huge explosion. He ran over and already the helicopter finally arrived with, uh, with Major General Homer Phillips, you know, who was played by R.G. Armstrong, by the way. Yeah, finally came to his rescue, you know, along with the helicopter pilot, and saved Dutch, you know, along with Anna, and they finally uh, got out of there once the, once they saw the huge blast, yeah, <laughs> that's sort of like the, uh, like the Hiroshima, all the way through the, through the jungles, you know, and then the movie ends, and what a wonderful, awesome sci-fi action adventure film that I've ever saw and I really enjoyed it never get tired of it I watch it anytime anywhere not, no matter what I do <laughs> whenever I set my mood straight or so I would watch this movie and it had awesome special effects you know very primitive from its time 
it had a lot of great stuff, especially with these scenes where, you know, he started shooting with um, all these lasers that he come up with, where the creature was killing all the soldiers, and you know, with a lot of graphic violence that they throw in, such as uh, Mac getting his head blown off like that, or even when, you know, when Dylan's uh, arm gets gets shot off like that, and 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 I know once he was starting to to shoot the creature. Yeah, suddenly the gun was still shooting while his arm was already, you know, laid down to the floor. Yeah, while he was screaming in, in pain. I mean, it was it was scary. And yeah, a lot of scenes like that were, were very graphic, and it was very scary the way they shot this. And although I have to admit the the most funny scene in the film was where uh, Mac was already, you know, on the lookout to look for the predator, and suddenly he. He accidentally killed a pig, only to find out if it was or not. And it, it happened at night. And then suddenly, uh, they also found out that Blaine's body has, has disappeared. So, yeah, the predator might have came in. <laughs> Probably snuck out in the jungle at night. And also a lot of great action scenes that they went into it. You know, a lot of gun blazing sounds of all these powerful guns. Even the the rocket launchers that they had and everything that they were going for for this movie you know powerful stuff and, and also has all these classic one-liners that they put in the film such as if it bleeds we can kill it or stick around or here here's another classic line I ain't got time to bleed yeah. It's and yeah, there, there were so many other corny jokes, but I really enjoy that. Nevertheless, I mean, the film was so badass that they were going for um, a lot of great cast that went into it. You know, Jesse Body the Ventura was awesome because he got to have the one of the biggest powerful guns to kill everybody in sight. I mean, who would have thought that this WWF wrestler can do all the moves right there? And by the way, he also went on to do another film with Arnold Schwarzenegger too, called The Running Man. Yeah, had had a brief cameo appearance, but that's okay. Yeah, I remember because he was in that film too, and I love that film also. Because he later went on to become a governor, and I know Schwarzenegger became one too for California. Yeah, but let's not let's not get that old over that, because I, I don't want to be into those politics stuff. But the fact is, the movie was awesome. I enjoyed it. I remember watching this many times. I never get tired of it. It's, it's scary, haunting. But it, it's always one of the films that I would really enjoy over and over again. And even for a Schwarzenegger fan like me and, and Stallone and all the rest. And all, all the other comedies that I love and all stuff. But if you're really in the mood for this film, definitely check it out, because you never get tired of it. Also, I love the theme song that they use uh, by composer Alan Silvestri, you know, who's been known for doing a lot of music for films like Back to the Future and the TV show Chips, as well as Who Framed Roger Rabbit. You know, he did a lot of that, that theme music. Uh, that, In fact, that sound that he does, such as... Do -do 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 I just love that theme song, you know, that they chose for this movie. It works so well. You just never forget that score that he did. That's what made this movie quite special. And it still stands by its time as one of the most popular you know, sci-fi flicks I've ever saw. Just too bad that it didn't get a much better treatment it deserves from Fox for its Blu-ray release, but let's pray to God we get a much better one. And by the way, the sequels that follow to this, you know, like Predators 2, now I love Predator 2 because I think it's a very underrated sequel, because this time, you know, the alien creature winds up in the city of Los Angeles in 1997. Yeah. I know Schwarzenegger was gonna, uh, was actually thinking about doing the sequel originally, but instead he went on to do Terminator 2. Judgment Day, which I had to say that was a good choice. Yeah, although Predator 2 would have been awesome for him, but I guess he had to work on several pay for that. I'm just glad he was, you know, working once again with James Cameron. 
because you know, they later teamed up again for True Lies. And also, I'm also happy that... Um, but it also sucks that as far as this film was going for because I know... I, I, I know I was very happy when they started making video games out of this. They also made a comic book too called Alien vs. Predator. It's sort of like Robocop vs. Terminator in that sort of way. Because that became an the most successful comic book of all time that yeah with a lot of action figures and all this stuff that they have from the movie yeah they worked together primarily that they were gonna make it into a movie so that's when they made Alien vs Predator now as much as I loved the first movie I mean I had to admit I thought it was a lot decent as it turned out it's not as good as it was gonna go for but you know it could have been better or worse However, I didn't like the sequel that followed, which is called Requiem. I was having some high hopes, but it turned out to be a disaster. Predators, on the other hand, um, which Robert Rodriguez, you know, produced the, the film with another director. I gotta admit, though, it, it sort of seems like it paid a tribute to the 1987 film. But on the other hand, though, I thought... Um, Adrian Brody, I mean, as good and talented the, as that actor was, and he's a great actor, no doubt about it, I thought he was really over the top and totally miscast. He was given somewhat of a tough guy's voice that was kind of irritating at times, yeah, with, a, with a loud sneer. So it's like he was trying to be like how how Christian Bale did it with, with, with all the Dark Knight movies that he did, you know, when he played Batman. Like he wanted to disguise his voice. It's kind of annoying. You know? I have to admit that. I guess he was sort of trying to be like Schwarzenegger. In that sort of way. No way in hell. But other than that though. I thought it was a decent film. You know? Not as good as Predator. But I think it's far from it. But anyway. Um, definitely check out Predator. If you really love action movies like this. Especially if you're a Schwarzenegger fan, like me, and all the others. And hell, if you love sci-fi films like Alien and Aliens and all the rest, this is definitely for you, because this movie was awesome. It's definitely one of my favorites. Right there. <laughs> yeah. That's Predator, and I gave it five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.